Christian Baptist Perspectives. I'm Kyle Staltfus, and uh, I'm talking today to Steve Russell. We're both here at Faith Builders, where both of us work, and uh, consider Steve a friend and a colleague. Um, today, we're talking about being politically pro-life, and, and you're going to have to help me understand what you mean by that a little bit as we go. But you're, you're describing, I think, something of your journey from being more politically active mm -hmm. in the, the pro-life movement to still being pro-life, but pro-life maybe in a, in a different sort of way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, just to get us started here, maybe you could tell us a little bit about your young adulthood, your childhood, and, and, and some of the, the religious disposition you had at that mm -hmm. point. Well, I was raised Catholic and um, in uh, what I would consider uh, active and pious Catholic home. And I, I learned a lot about uh, God, who God, wa God is. And um, I went to Catholic school. And so uh, this definitely deeply formed me. And one aspect of Catholicism is a, um, a real care for life in all of its aspects. And um, because of the situation in our country, uh, there's a, a big push about um, life, uh, prenatal life. Mm -hmm. So uh, that shaped me a lot. Um, when, when I became a teenager, I started to drift away, I, uh, as many teenagers will do, when you, you start to wonder about who you are and what life is all about. And I, I started to drift away, and um, as that happened, I, I was um, fortunate to be invited to a um, Baptist church for a revival meeting, and at that time, I gave my life to the Lord. And what happened w was, it, it's not that I learned anything different at that um, revival meeting, except that I had to personally give my life to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So w what I heard him say, I already knew. I knew that Jesus died for my sins, and there was no other way that I was going to be forgiven. I knew that, but I, I, at, after hearing the sermon, I did give my life to the Lord. And two things changed. This was during the Vietnam War. I was actually in the last uh, Vietnam War draft, and, uh, but I wasn't drafted. But uh, I was a, a patriotic young man because Catholics really appreciate what this country has given them, the freedom. Mm. We, don't, we didn't have it always over in the uh, old world. And so uh, Catholics tend to be, think that being politically active is important. And, um, but anyway, so one thing uh, that I re realized was it's a Christian doesn't kill anyone. Mm -hmm. And you know, because, because there was at least a possibility that I would be drafted. And the other thing was I wanted to serve the Lord. And so I also thought I wanted to be a priest. So, mm -hmm. so um, my, my Catholicism, uh, my Catholic school experience, it, it really did shape me in, I would say, in basically in good ways. And then uh, after I had drifted away a bit, when I heard uh, the gospel preached by a preacher from Philadelphia, I gave my life to the Lord, and that's what started me on the path that got me where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. So you're saying in, in, your, in your Catholic upbringing, there's already a, a realization of the value of life. Mm -hmm. uh, can you say just a little bit more about that? Well, <coughs> well after, um, well, actually, I'm. Uh, maybe what I'll say is how that then affected me, yeah. especially politically. Um, I, uh, Catholics already appreciate uh, the freedom uh, that they have in this country and often are very politically active because of that. Yeah. Um, and so when I gave my life to the Lord and uh, I, I, I realized that how I vote or act politically is, is very important. and. I think because I realized that it's wrong to kill, that this, this became even bigger in my life. And so mm -hmm. um, after, for, for a while after I uh, gave my life to the Lord, I was politically active as a Catholic. Mm -hmm. And that meant I, um, I don't remember that I ever contributed financially, but I did uh, vote and I did um, talk about these things and I did um, march in the pro-life march in DC a couple times. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and, 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 a, and truly a motivating factor was that now this, this mattered more than it did had before because I really did care about what the Lord 
yeah, yeah. wanted. You wanted to take action. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I also did give to um, uh, organizations that helped young young women that were in trouble. Mm -hmm. So that that uh, I, I wasn't just it wasn't just political. It was also uh, trying to help um, maybe in a more uh, practical way. Okay, so you, you wanted to take action. You're, mm -hmm. you're involved in some, some marches, some rallies. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. giving some donations and, and even mm -hmm. being personally connected, the way it sounds, mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to, some, to some ladies who need help. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to say anything more about that experience? What was that like? Uh, well, uh, yeah, you know, uh, this is one of the things about politics. Yeah. It, ha it, it, it actually feels powerful. It feels like you are doing something, you're making the ball move ahead. Um, because you're talking to people, you're, um, you're voting, and sometimes the person you vote for gets in there, and so, wow, we've, we've taken a step ahead. Mm. Uh, so there's something very um, emotional and maybe even a little bit intellectual about, be, about participating. You're, you're convinced that, that you're actually um, doing something that's making a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, you can almost feel it and see it. Mm -hmm. but, but you started to feel some liabilities here too. Well, yes, eventually. At, I didn't recognize this at first. Um, after I became Beachy, I did vote at least one more time. I, I, I can't remember if it was more than that. In a, and I'm talking about in a presidential election. So mm -hmm. after I became Beachy, I voted at least one more time. And I would have participated in a, at least one more march. I, I can't remember all those details. I did give a presentation at the Beachy Church once about um, how many uh, unborn children have been killed in the United mm. States. And at mm. that time, it was the whole population of Austria and Switzerland. And I mean, when, when you, when you, so this, this is just to illustrate how you, you can really get involved in this real, two countries wiped out. Never mm -hmm. had a chance to live. And, um, but there was something that happened that uh, made, made, there are two things that happened that made it clear to me that th this is not actually as productive as I th said it did feel at first. One of them was, um, I, I'll just say it, I voted for President Reagan, and he said he's pro-life. And he went ahead with one of his key campaign promises to lower taxes, and at that time, Congress was Democratic. So he went on TV and he pled with the people, you need to talk to your congressman if you want this to pass. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The people responded. Yeah. They called, and the, and the Democratic House of uh, Representatives um, cooperated, and okay. they, passed, yeah. they passed this tax bill. But he never did that with the pro-life things. So uh -huh. I started to realize, you know, they, they, they bring together a lot of uh, pledges, but they're not equal, and they don't equal my care and, uh, for them. And so uh, he'll do the ones that, uh, any politician will do the ones that he feels will help him the next time, oh. but not, uh, not those that are really going to cost. This would have really cost to say, I'm pro-life. Um, contact your congressman and let's do something about this. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing. I, I saw that uh, their, um, the pol politicians' concerns weren't mine. But I think more uh, the deeper thing was I started to recognize, uh, I was by things I read and by talking to other people, that what I was doing was trying to impose Christian moral uh, morality on other people Mm -hmm. and they're not even Christians. They don't want it. They couldn't do it if, uh, they couldn't do it. And uh, they don't want it though. And so here I am trying to use the political process to impose my will on others, which is what oh. a law is. Mm -hmm. And I started to see something, this is the most important thing for me, I started to see that I was building a wall, not just between me and those other people who weren't Christians, but between Jesus and them. Hmm. I was making it harder for them to hear. I would hear people talk about um, uh, Christians in very derogatory um, ways because of the pro-life movement and other ways that some Christians were trying to impose Christian morality. And I heard women say, who are you to tell me what to do with my body? 
mm-hmm. and, uh, and just simply refuse to hear about Christ. And that's really the thing that uh, startled me. And uh, with the other thing, the real realization that a politician will bring together many pledges, but they're not equal. And the ones that I care about don't necessarily get taken care of. Mm. Those two things, but especially um, the recognition that I was making Christianity look like something it isn't. And mm-hmm. so I was, I was pushing people away. It feels like something I think I had to feel uh, forgiven for. Huh. Not not now, but mm-hmm. because I was really, I was really alienating people in unnecessary ways. You can you can approach a person about the the, the reality of abortion mm-hmm. without turning them away from Christ, mm-hmm. Be, but that's not what what the po- political process does. Mm-hmm. So give me give me a little time frame for a little context here. About when is this? Well, um, I I remember well I was I was beachy when. Um, President Reagan was president, so yeah. we're talking about the early 80s. So still, still Reagan is when you're you're, you're kind of getting well, into the feelings. That was before. It was before that because uh. Uh, um, Roe v. Wade. I, I okay. As far as I was 17 when I gave my life to the Lord, mm-hmm. and so Roe v. Wade came right after that, and, uh-huh. and so that's part two of why it it uh, really mattered to me. It was here I am a new Christian, and this horrible thing was uh-huh. um, was had become politically real, and, and, and as a Catholic, uh, that, that was, um, you know, being, being involved in the political process was, was actually encouraged. Mm-hmm. So, so it would go all the way back to uh, the, the 70s, the middle 70s, uh, into the middle um, mm-hmm. 80s. So there's Roe v. Wade, it's seen as kind of a watershed moment, at least mm-hmm. with the abortion issue, but also yes. you're seeing a culture that's yes. in some ways just not sure where it's heading anymore. It's losing yeah. its Christian moorings, you could say. Well, you know, at first it didn't feel that way, I don't think. Okay. I don't remember feeling that way. I felt <coughs> like, okay, here's a mistake. Uh-huh. Um, as, as time went on, it, it's, I felt more that way. But the important thing there, perhaps, is to say that I, it hasn't tempted me to go back into being uh-huh. politically active because I think I would actually only a- add to the uh, massive turmoil and, and, s- and disruption and the um, alienation between people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I think what's happened in our country, even as many of us call ourselves Christians, and I'm talking about after the 80s maybe, um, I think that um, I think religion has and God has become less important for a lot of us. Mm. And something has to mean, has to have value for us. And I think politics has become that for a no. large portion of the population, mm. even those that still say they're Christian. And so, um, you know, this is it, this is important. And uh, I, I, somehow we just don't see that we are, that w- the Christians that are involved are actually not making the situation better, they're making it worse. And if I could, I'll just uh, mention a book. It will really illustrate a lot of what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. There's a book called Not By, Not by Might, I believe, mm-hmm. by um, Ed Decker, I think, and, um, oh, uh, Cal Thomas. I think I have the two names right. Cal Thomas is right. And Cal Thomas and this other man were uh, involved in getting the moral majority started, yeah. which was Christian. It's kind of the center of the religious <sighs> right. Yes, yeah. and and that was all during this time. Yeah. And uh, this book is excellent because these two men were involved in that. They tr- They thought they were moving the ball forward, as you can say. And um, in the end, they said that nothing changed, or it became worse. Because and and uh, uh, the pro life movement was a big thing for for the moral majority. Mm-hmm. So, um, and, and both of them, they haven't gotten to the place where they'd say the Christian shouldn't participate in politics, but they did feel that it was a, m- a mistake to make a Christian organization take on a political um, uh, color and, uh, and push for laws mm-hmm. to be imposed on others. They, they move that way anyway, which is refreshing um, but they still don't see what I think I see, which is that uh, in my kingdom, the, the kingdom of Christ, we do things in a different way. We woo people to Christ. Mm-hmm. We, we encourage them to do what's 
best for them as humans. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't, don't force things on them. In the other kingdom, uh, there's, uh, in the end, um, coercion is part of, of the whole package. Mm -hmm. in, the, in, in politics, uh, yes, there's, there's the attempt to encourage and to uh, sh point people to the best. But in the end, uh, you start with a little fine and it goes up from there. There's coercion mm -hmm. if you don't do what the government wants. And you're, you're getting here already, but I just don't want to miss the don't want to miss the juncture that you're, you talk about the, some of the, the the weaknesses of the moral majority, some of the pro-life mm -hmm. activism that you were involved in at that point. Mm -hmm. There's the weakness of just being attached to a certain form of coercion, mm -hmm. right? and mm -hmm. the weakness of some of the integrity of the systems of politics and, and the, the invested interests that many politicians mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. Um, keep, keep filling out something of the alternative. What did you come uh, to? Where are you heading? Well, I already mentioned um, what it means to be a human. Uh -huh. And that is really what Christ has come to do, to make us really what it means to be human. Mm -hmm. And um, it comes out of following him and actually drawing our lives from him. And that is a, it's a free will decision on our part it's a free will decision on God's part. He freely chose to send his son. So um, Christianity is actually about becoming the kind of person I ought to be so that I choose to do, to follow my father's, my heavenly father's will mm -hmm. rather than have to be coerced to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if that's what, what, what you were thinking about or not, but at, at least for me, uh, I, I feel like, uh, you know, as I, as I think about what it means to be a Christian, mm -hmm. it feels like freedom, internal freedom. Mm -hmm. When I think about, when I go back in my mind to what I was doing back then, it felt good. I'm, I'm, I'm saving babies' lives. But I also saw that I was trying to impose myself on others. It mm -hmm. didn't feel bad back then. I don't mm -hmm. think I recognized uh, that doesn't really fit the Christian um, uh, stance. So you're, you're moving toward a stance of you're, you're entering into the life of Christ. Mm -hmm. There's freedom there. That, mm -hmm. that gives you a certain capacity to engage people, I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. what, what about the unborn? What's, what's yes. <laughs> what, 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 uh, what might you say to a person who, who feels like you're, you're complicit mm -hmm. if you're not ah, taking some kind of political good. action? So in other words, my, my uh, brother Christian, who is... Um, Politically active, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, I would try to get him to see. Well, uh, yes, I would try to get him to see some of the things I've already talked about. That hmm. what this does, because if let's just say, okay, let's go to my Baptist friends. For them, evangelism is a b big thing. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, if they would see that this builds walls rather than tears walls down, mm -hmm. or even gives a person the the ability, the unbeliever, an ability to see uh, who Christ is and the potential in following him, what that might mean for himself. If I could get him to see that, that might be a big plus right there. Um, I, it, would be, it would take an involved um, bit of talk about the two kingdoms, that, that there are two kingdoms and that they operate differently in this world. And I even want to talk to him about uh, history as far as why the church, which was originally uh, unengaged in in the uh, political world, eventually became engaged in the political mm. world. Um, that lack of engagement actually frees us up. This would be another point. It actually frees us up to do what really matters. Mm -hmm. If if I impose a Christian morality on others, I haven't really helped them move forward in their own lives. Mm. I haven't helped them become what it really means to be human. But if they become what it, if, if they're on the path of becoming truly human, mm -hmm. then they will understand, even if not right away. You know, that's one of the things uh, a person can, can I, I know for my own self, that I didn't see as much as I see now, as soon as I gave my life to the Lord, I, I, I have grown. And so there is even the possibility that someone could give his life to the Lord and not immediately see that abortion is necessarily a, a negative. That might be something a, a person needs to grow in. Uh, but anyway, the, 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 my main point is that we all 
as we start to follow Christ, that we're growing, that we're changing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and um, that kind of thing is not what the political process mm -hmm. in, in enables. That's what I'd want him to see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and there's, a real, there's a real temptation, I think, for, uh, for churches, especially maybe in democratic societies, mm -hmm. to, to really kind of empty themselves into this supposed public space and yes. feel like that's, that's, where the, that's where the stuff is actually getting done. When yes. the reality is there's, there's a lot that a church, even just a, uh, a small local church, can accomplish that may be doing a lot more. Well, I really believe that a, a, your life lived well, mm -hmm. lived faithfully. Your small life, you're, you're not a president, you're not, you're not even a county commissioner. Yeah. I think your life lived well will radiate out for generations in, in the effect it has, farther than the effect of President Reagan or President Bush or President Obama or President Trump. Hmm. Uh, they, they, they seem so big right now, yeah, you know, yeah. but I think, you know, uh, okay, I, I mentioned I voted for President Reagan. Well, so what now? Mm -hmm. You know, what does that mean now? How, how much effect has he actually had on the world long term? But it's the faithfulness of Christians, little people, that, that radiates out. Um, I'll say something. Um, I, I have recently been thinking about my, um, my own heritage. My people were English Catholics who were persecuted by um, the, the English monarchs because mm. they didn't, they, well, they, were, they started the Church of England. Yeah. And my, my people had to go underground. They cared about, whether it's right or wrong, they cared about their faith. They went underground and then they came to the uh, colony of Maryland, which was specifically established so English Catholics could flee England and be a little freer. Mm -hmm. And I honestly um, uh, think that uh, that has radiated out to me, and I think that's why I'm Beachy Amish, <laughs> because those people cared. Uh -huh. and, um, and, and I think that was passed on, maybe not so much just in, in my family, but I actually think in the community. The, the, the community of Maryland Catholics that I was part of, I remember uh, being in Catholic school, and this was actually um, a part of my consciousness that, that um, wow, my people came here because they cared about mm -hmm. their faith, uh, even though they were persecuted. And so um, I, I, I think it wasn't just what I learned in school. I think it was a, 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 an even unspoken uh -huh. kind of thing in the community. That's what I think. And I, 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 I really do think that, that we should evaluate well the, the significance of what the big guys do. I'm not saying it's not important, it is. But we should really evaluate well the significance of what the big guys do mm -hmm. and what the little faithful guys do. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that I think keeps on radiating out. Mm -hmm. And isn't this just one of the, some of the reversals of the kingdom? Right? Oh, yeah. The, the, the things the little guys do matter, and sometimes the, <laughs> the pontiffs on the top, it's kind of inflated, yeah. and, they, and they, they make their appeal based on that. And, you know, like I say, something comes out of that. Um, I think of Luke. Luke uh, talks about um, who is reigning uh, when John the Baptist, is uh, uh, his, his um, parents are childless, and when they want a child. It talks about that, and then it talks, and when Jesus is born too, and then it talks about uh, when Jesus starts his ministry. And mm -hmm. in both cases, it mm -hmm. says who the emperor was and who the local ruler was mm -hmm. in both cases. And then it talks about these poor, insignificant Jewish families. Mm -hmm. Well, who is more important in the, in the long uh, run of history? Uh, see the Caesars and the governors. Yes, they even today, Caesar's law still affects us. So there's some um, effect there. Or is it um, is it uh, John and his parents? Is it Jesus and his parents, hmm. who would have been scorned by even a, a low level Roman official? Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, well, we know the answer to that. We know which lives have really mm -hmm. affected us and the world. Mm -hmm. the world. So, um, yeah, it can, it can uh, feel um, important, uh, the, the political world and the political action, and it really does affect us. I'm not saying it doesn't, but um, 
we have a much more important kingdom to, to work in hmm. and to really put all of our effort into. Hmm. Well, Steve, now you're, you're preaching the gospel. So <laughs> thank you. Let's thank end you. With that. All right. Thank <clears throat> you.